Welcome to Myositis 101 for Patients. Today, first of all, I would like to thank my patients as well as family members who have shown so much of support and encouragement for these videos. It is this support and encouragement that keeps me going week after week to provide patient education for myositis. Thank you. So today we will talk about some of the very few fundamental key questions that bothers most of my patients and their family members, which are what are the risks of developing myositis? For example, why did I develop myositis? Or uh, what about the risk of my family members to develop myositis? What triggered myositis in my case? And so on and so forth. Basically, we basically we are talking about risk factors for developing myositis. Broadly, we categorize these risk factors as genetic risk factors and environmental risk factors. Today, we will focus ourselves on the genetic risk factors. And next week, we'll talk about some of the environmental triggers for myositis. As you know, myositis is an autoimmune disease. So like any other autoimmune disease, myositis happens when a patient with certain set of high-risk genes is exposed to certain environmental condition or triggers. You can also think about it is as myositis being a complex interaction between certain high-risk genes and a certain environmental situations. One of the most fundamental questions my patient asks me is, since I have developed myositis, would my kids or my sibling are at any risk of developing myositis? The answer, fortunately, is almost always no except in a very, very, very rare situation. Just to give you an understanding of the, how rare it is, is in last 10 years, I've seen hundreds of myositis patients and I only know one combination of a daughter and a father with dermatomyositis. In fact, it is so rare to have two family members closely related to develop myositis is that when we hear that history, we often think that that patient in front of us does not have myositis. Maybe that patient has some other muscular disease. Generally speaking, genetic muscular diseases like muscle dystrophies. However, given myositis is an autoimmune disease, the first degree relative of myositis is at increased risk of developing any other autoimmune disease. For example, autoimmune thyroiditis but not necessarily myositis. This is also true for any other autoimmune diseases. For example, a patient with rheumatoid arthritis could have their family member affected by, let's say, Sjogren's syndrome or autoimmune thyroiditis and so on. This is because autoimmune genes tends to run together in the family. So patients with autoimmune disease have increased risk of their family member to develop any other autoimmune disease not necessarily the same autoimmune disease. A study in myositis revealed that the first degree relatives of myositis have increased risk of rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, type 1 diabetes, and autoimmune thyroiditis. Next, I want to take a minute or so to explain you what do I mean by increased risk. This is because most patients and family members misinterpret when they hear that they are at increased risk. When a physician tells you that you're at increased risk of a particular disease, what they're really saying is that the risk is increased as compared to normal healthy population. Let me explain you this. Let's say I develop myositis. So my family members are at increased risk of developing a particular autoimmune disease, whether it's rheumatoid arthritis or autoimmune thyroiditis. If a normal population risk of developing autoimmune disease is 1 to 2 percent, my family members are at increased risk, let's say 4 to 6 percent. So that is an increased risk as compared to normal healthy population risk of 1 to 2 percent. But that would also mean that there is 90 plus percent chances that my family member may not develop any autoimmune disease. I hope that is clear to you by the, with this example. Now let's discuss which particular genes are responsible for developing myositis. There is a rather large number of genes that are called major histocompatibility complex genes or MHC genes, 
which sit on chromosome number six, which are largely thought to be responsible for genetic predisposition or genetic risk for developing myositis. However, this is the same major histocompatibility complex genes or MSC genes, which are also responsible for any other common autoimmune disease, such as rheumatoid arthritis or lupus. So this set of genes are called, can be called as autoimmunity genes. And also it's not that one particular gene that is leading to myositis. It's generally a complex interaction of large number of genes that would lead to a genetic risk of developing myositis. Now, just having that in best environment of that complex interacting genes for myositis is not enough to develop myositis because we know that many patients have that complex interaction of genes together, but they still never develop myositis throughout their life. So that is why we think there has to be a trigger, whether it's an environmental trigger or some other trigger that leads to expression of that complexly interacting genes to develop myositis. In the end, I would like to summarize that myositis happens when there is a complex interaction of highly disease causing genes happening in a particular individual. And even that is not enough to develop myositis. There has to be a certain trigger that then leads to activation of these set of gene leading to clinical expression of developing myositis such as muscle weakness, rash or other organ involvement. I hope you like this video and I hope you will subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can get the latest updates on our next week video. Thank you.